A'udhu billah minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum again mga sisters Jannah princesses And all my families and friends Na nanonood Inshallah let's have a look at this one Okay let's continue po kung ano yung um, Na start natin It's all about remedied compensations and atonements Okay yung mga anong klase ng pagbabayad Okay Na kailangan gawin, gawin natin according sa mga scenarios or yung mga nagawa natin na hindi kalugod-lugod kaya ako sa baka nagawa tayo. Okay? So, for this one, we are on the topic about FIDIA. Okay? Ano po ba ito? FIDIA. So, those who are permitted to break their fast in Ramadan and offer FIDIA only. So, who are those now? Okay, so they are permitted to break their fast. Tapos, they will have to pay fidya. Okay, so let's get to know them. Inshallah, bet nila. Rabbi Zinilman. So the meaning, what is the meaning of fidya? Okay, anyone can guess? There you go. The meaning of fidya translates as the offering of one meal to a poor person, either offering a lunch or a supper, on a scale of the average of the which you feed your family. Okay, so it's actually a what? One meal to a poor person. Okay, that is equivalent sa kung ano pagpapakain niyo sa inyo pamilya. Okay, so either feeding of a poor for every day, individually, or gathering all the poor according to the number of days and feeding them. So it's up to you. Kung pwede one person a day, or 10 person in 6 days, or just in one go 60 pets, so it's up to you, as long as you feed them. So it is the, as the companion Anas Ibn Malik did when he became old. So ito yung ginawa na, ito ang sangsaba natin si Anas Ibn Malik. Nung tumanda na siya, hindi niya na kaya. Okay? So, this is what he has done. Nung nagpapakain siya. At ganun din sa nakikita natin sa mga nagpapa-iftar dito sa Masjid al-Nabawi. Masyara na tabara ka na maraming nagpapakain. Okay? Subhanallah. Now, so let's carry on. The other method is to give each poor person half sa, one kilograms and half in kanina, okay, half sa, another way daw is to give them 1 kg and of raw food, yung hilaw, okay, hindi na cook, of rice, wheat, and etc. And it is better to offer it with some meal and oil. Yung parang kompleto na rin, para maluto naman nila ng maayos at makakain sila from kanin, okay, para konting ulam na rin. So offering fit, yeah, should be in the month of Ramadan and not before that, okay? So yun ang pag-offer ng fit, yeah. So during the month of Ramadan, kasi how can you, uh, kumbaga yun ang the best time to give the uh, payment. Uh, kung hindi ka makagawa uh, ng something or may, may sakit ka o matanda ka, okay? So who are these gay okay, people actually? Let's get to know them. Chala bed nila. So these people... No fast sila, pero mag-offer sila ng filia. It's those old men or women who are incapable of observing fast may atone for it by offering filia and no kada. Okay, so mag-offer lang sila ng pakain. They don't need to pay anything na magbabayad sila ng kada, of which we have to discuss later on. Which is, in here you can already see, making up the missed days, okay, yung mga kada. But for them, it's only fidya. They only need to feed others and they are okay. Inshallah, bed nila. Yung old men or women. Okay? Then, mabait ang Allah subhanallah sa atin. Okay? Ito pa. Who are these again? So, a sick and invalid person whose health is not likely to improve. Okay? So, they are the people na they can offer fidya. Incurable sickness such as cancer, etc. So, pwede sila mag fidya. Okay? They don't need to do any more Kada, okay? Just pakain, okay? So, kanina matanda, ito naman yung may mga incurable sickness, yung mga may sakit, na, na hindi mag likely to improve, okay? Another, ano to? Sheikh al-Islam Dal-Taymiyah said 
Rahimullah, that the person who suffers from unconsciousness for days, every time he observes fasting, then he may also offer fidya. Yung lagi pong uh, nahihimatay, okay, every time na that for fasting siya, hindi niya talaga kaya, then he can also do their fidya. Magpakain siya sa ibang tao and it will atone him. Yung chara beet nila. So ito po yung um, uh, kwan ng fidya. Okay? Sa, yung una, yung matanda mga matatanda at yung mga hindi, number two, yung mga hindi na likely mag improve ang kanilang sickness. And number three, itong laging nahihimatay at dahil nag-fasting siya. So, pwede na po sila mag-fed yet only. Okay? Ano po ba itong third? Okay? Itong sinasabi nilang uh, kada. Okay? Ang kada naman ay yung nagbabite ng um, mist uh, mist na mga uh, fasting, okay? So, ito naman ay yung kanina nga sa slide nito about the sick person. Let's carry on. Ano, ano, ano pa bang uh, classification o ano pa bang scenario pwede tayong involved dyan? Let's see. Inshallah, no, but we cannot control. This is part of our life, right? Uh, you know, Allah Ta'ala is the one who ordains everything. Okay? Permitted to break their fast pero magkakada siya. So, sino ito? So, the sick person whose health is likely to improve and his sickness is curable such as fever, cold, or other short-term sickness. So, kung ikaw ay nakakaranas po ng ganitong karamdaman, yung may lagnet ka, at hindi mo kaya mag-fasting for that day, then it's permissible na ibibreak niyo pa yung fast. Pero magbabayad po kayo ng as kada sa later time, okay, na kaya niyo na magbayad, okay? Kasi na mag improve ka naman. So, you, you can improve, so you can pay at a later time. So, you are permitted, inshallah, without committing any sin on it. You just have to intend also that you will pay it, okay, inshallah, at a later time. So, those are uh, about sickness. So, ito yung mga rulings, okay? Three cases of fasting, Kung may sakit in a state of sickness, if it's not difficult for him to fast and it does not harm him, then he must observe fasting. So, una, pag um, hindi daw mahirap para sa kanya ang mag-fasting at saka hindi rin naman nakakaharm, okay, or hindi nakakapos po ng kanyang recovery, then he must observe fasting. So, yung may mga taong ma-observe natin, may mga lagnat sila, ubo, at etc. Pero nasa fasting pa rin po sila, um, masyara tabara ka, may alam reward them. Kasi, for them, uh, the, uh, they find it not difficult, okay, and for, they find it that it should, it will not harm them. So, it's one of the uh, cases na um, masyara kung nasa loob ka ng sickness, okay, Dito, you have to observe fasting. Kung both na ito ay namit, hindi mahirap at hindi nakakaharm sa iyo at hindi nakakapos po ng recovery. That's the first scenario. Second scenario po, okay, uh, again, mga sisters, mga new Muslim, at saka yung mga nag-aaral pa lang ng Islam, inshallah, so, inshallah, makatulong po ito. Okay? So, second scenario po, if it's difficult for him to fast but it does not harm him, then it's dislike for him to fast. So ito, sa unang statement, kung nahuhihirapan siya mag-fasting pero hindi nakaka, kahit hindi nakakasama sa kanya, then it's dislike. Kung bag hindi naman siya in-encourage, dislike for, para sa kanya ang mag-fasting. Because he preferred fasting, which he finds difficult and hard to accepting Allah's permission given him to break his fast. So, um, Ito po, okay? I hope you find it. I will repeat. Uh, if it's difficult for him to fast, but it does not harm him, then it's dislike for him to fast. So, ito. Nasa kanya ang pagpipili kung uh, pagpa-fasting siya or hindi. May option siya, okay? Then, number third scenario. If fasting harms him and postpones his recovery, then it's forbidden for him to fast. So, ito, both na nakakaharm, nakakapospon ni recovery, then forbidden for him to fast. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted says in Surah Tumnasa, and do not kill yourselves. Surely Allah is most forgiving or most merciful to you. 
So sa scenario na to, mga sisters, okay, whoever's listening, so ito ayaw ni Allah sa mga natala. Kung nakaka-harm po sa katawan natin at nakaka-postpone, ayaw niyo rin po naman niya tayong pahirapan. Ganun po kabait na ang Allah sa mga natala. Sabi niya, huwag niyo daw patayin sa sarili niyo, okay? Kumbaga, um, maawain naman siya. Surely Allah is most merciful to you. So let's carry on lang po sa next slide, inshallah. So, yun po ang mga cases, okay? About the sickness. So, we will carry on with our next slide. How about po yung nag-travel? Kasi hindi naman po lahat ay nasa bahay lang. Hindi po ba? May mga nag-travel din, syempre, sa buwan ng Ramadan. So, let's have a look, okay, on what is the ruling about them, inshallah. So, now po ito ay, sila po ay permitted to break and make kada only, inshallah. Itong sabi dito, Whoever travels intending deceit just to get excuse not to observe fasting is not permitted to break his fast in Ramadan, but other than those, there are four cases. So may mga tao din na parang nag-intend lang naman sila na ganun, alam na spesa kung ano yung intention nila, sorry po. But there are uh, four cases, okay? Kung yung mga unintentional naman, okay? Let's have a look. Itong four scenarios. So, case one, okay, in case someone feels exhausted out of exertion during a travel and finds fasting difficult, then it's forbidden for him to fast. So, itong isang taong din to ay napagod, napagod, lahat-lahat, napagod siya, na find niya difficult pala ang fasting sa kanya dahil nasa loob siya ng uh, uh, pag, um, lalakbay. Then, it's forbidden. Ito po ay pinag-ginagawang uh, parang forbidden for him na mag-fasting at siya ay magbabayad lang ng kada. Meaning, babayaran po niya yung araw na yun na namiss niya sa isa sa mga araw na darating siya ala bed nila. Ito po yung case one, yung nahirapan siya. Okay? Ito po yung galing yung hadith niya kung saan yung ruling ng galing ay, let's have a look. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once departed to Makkah in the month of Ramadan, the year of the conquest, and he and the people were fasting. He was then told that the people were finding fasting difficult and were waiting for what he would do. He then called for a cup of water when it was after the Asar prayer, and he drank, and the people were looking at him. Okay, so he was told afterwards that some of the people had continued to fast. And he said, those are the disobedient ones. Those are the disobedient ones. So, mashallah, ito na nga po, nag-example na ang Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kasi napansin na po niya na nahihirapan yung mga kasama niya. Kaya, nag, kumbaga, nag-example siya na nagpakuha siya ng basing tubig at siya ay uminom. Okay, ang mga tao na may natignan lang siya, at saka yung iba, ang iba ay nag-inom, ang sinunod siya, ang iba naman ay hindi. At saka yung mga hindi ay sinabi niya, those are the disobedient ones, those are the disobedient. Kasi alam na nga niya yung nahihirap, kumbaga, okay? So, ito po yung dalil na pwede po, na pag nahihirapan po tayo sa biyahe, pwede mo lang i-break. Bayaran mo lang po yun sa susunod na araw, wala po tayong nakuhang sing doon, insya Allah, bed nila. Kira lang po. In case someone finds fasting hard and difficult, okay, but not as much as the previously mentioned case, then it's disliked for him to fast in this case due to the rejection of the permission that Allah, the exalted, has given him. So, dislike lang siya. Kung baga, makuro lang sa kanya. Kung baga, hindi in-encourage na ituloy niya. Pero, finding difficult din siya, pero hindi masyado doon. Okay. Then parang may, meron lang siyang option, either continue or hindi. It's like for him to fast na lang sa kanya. Okay. Another is uh, sa case 2 po siya. Okay. Ito naman case number 3. Let's have a quick look. In case someone finds no difficulty in observing the fast, okay, he may choose the most easy case for him. He can choose to fast, it's easier or breaking the fast. According to verse in the Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah intends for you ease and he doesn't want to make things difficult for you. So ito wal- walang difficulty sa so case number three, okay? Observe and he may choose the most easy case for him, okay? 
meron pa rin siyang option, okay? So, ito pa yung mga severity. Yung isa, nahihirapan masyado. So, it is parang discarded, discouraged. So, huwag niyo i-continue. Yung case number two, hindi masyadong nahihirapan. Ito naman, hindi siya nahihirapan, okay? Pero nasa travel pa rin siya. But if you choose to break it, kailangan niyang magbayad lang in another time, okay? Because Allah doesn't want paghihirap, okay? Ayaw niya maging, uh, maghirap tayo, okay? So, gusto niya lagi ng Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kung anong easy for us. Then, bayaran lang po natin. Ganun po talaga siya kabait. Masya Allah, tabarak Allah, wakbar. So, continue naman to sa case number four. Kasi meron po tayong four cases. Pag nag-travel, and if they, example, fasting and breaking the fast were the same for him, it's better for them to choose fasting according to the following tradition. So, ito po yun na sinabi na kung pinili niya na uh, mag, itong both ay were the same for him, it's better na piliin niya rin ang pagpa-fasting. Okay? According to the following tradition, in Hadith, okay, it says, Reported Muslim that Abi Darda, may Allah be pleased with him, we sent out with our messenger on one of his journey on a very hot day. And it was so hot that one had to put his hand over his head because of the severity of the heat. None of us were observing the fast except the Prophet and Ibn Rahwah. Okay? So, ito yung po galing na yun. Okay? Kung baga kahit na mainit, nahirap na whatsoever, pinili pa rin yung mag-fasting. So, kahit sa anong paraan, um, kung ano yung nararapat sa paningin nyo, at na meron naman dito ang example, meron naman kabayaran, nasa sa inyo na po. Kung ito tuloy nyo, alhamdulillah po. So, so, dito na lang po muna tayo mag-i-end about sa uh, Fidya Inshallah part na to. Uh, it's already about how many minutes? 16 minutes, I think. Okay. We will just cut this para lang yung iba ay makakatch up yung nahihirapan mag tumingin sa video pag mahaba na po. Okay? Para ma-absorb nila ito as much as they can. So, hanggang dito lang po muna ito. Subhanak awa bihamdak. Siya doon na laan ta. Wanastag firka. Wa atubu ilay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.